Uh, so we're continuing on uh, topic seven. We're showing the application of decimals to problems on page 30 and 31. So on page 30, number 7a and 7c, we're asked to show that these three points are collinear by calculating the slopes, and we did that. But just to enter the points, here's the point entry. Remember, you've got to put them in with brace uh, brackets around them, each ordered pair. Okay, they're color-coded. So this represents the color code here. And this represents the four points of the parallelogram, a separate problem. So what I, what I did is I connected the points just with the software that I had. And I also, with this red line, to show that they're collinear. And for the, the other problem, to show that they are at the corners of the points are at the corners of a parallelogram, I connected them with my software with these uh, black lines. And you can see that this line is parallel to this line. Certainly looks like it's equal in length. And this line is parallel to this one. The opposite sides are equal are parallel and equal in length. I could have um, entered the numbers using the table feature in Desmos and then connected uh, points and showed it uh, that way. Um, number 3110a, find the equation of the line that is the right bisector perpendicular to and through the midpoint of the line segment between minus 3 and 6 and 5 and comma 2. So the first thing I put in the uh, two coordinates, x1, y1 is minus 3, 6, and x2, y2 is 5, 2. I then calculate the bisector, and you can see the numbers show up here, 1, 4. Okay, so I've entered those points. Then what I do is that I know um, we go back to the problem. We can calculate the slope of this uh, two points. We're given these two points, so I can do the difference in y, which is 6 minus 2 over x2 minus x1, which would be um, 6 minus 2, or I should say uh, 2 minus 6, 2 minus 6, sorry, over 5 minus minus 3, which would work out to be 0.5 right here. So m1 calculates this put the formula in and it calculates because it recognizes these values and puts them in. The slope of the line connecting these points is minus 0.5. Now I want the uh, slope of the line that bisects that. So if it bisects it, it's going to be at right angles and be the ne negative reciprocal. The negative reciprocal, this is minus a half. So we take the negative reciprocal, reciprocal of that, it actually becomes plus 2. So I've used M2 as the slope of the perpendicular line. And then I calculated what B was by using the slope that I calculated here. B is equal to, I can use any ordered pair that I want. Um, I've used Y3, M3 because over here, it must go through the midpoint, and I calculated the midpoint right here. So B is equal to Y3 minus M2X3. Actually, this is the only ordered pair that I can use because this represents the midpoint. Oops, sorry. So now I know the value of B. I can go back and write that y, the generalized equation is y equals m2x, m2 is this, slope of 2, and b I get from this. So the slope, uh, the equation of the line is y equals 2x plus 2, 
and it's shown over here. Here's the line y equals 2x plus 2. That's this line over here. These are the two points that we entered. Minus 3, 6, which is this one. And 5, 2, which is right over here. By the way, I answered these three points, the two points given and the midpoint right here just to show where they are. So here, these are the two points that are given. Minus 3, 6 is right here. 5, 2, right over here. The midpoint that we calculated is right over here. And you can see if you connect these points here, then uh, you can see that this is the right bisector. In other words, it, the distance from here to here is the same as difference from there to there. And if you connect these points together, they form a right angle with uh, the line, the line y equals 2x plus 2. So again, what we did was enter the two given points, this one and that one. We then calculated the right bisector, which is this point right here, 1, 4. You can see when x is 1, y is 4. Then, um, since we know the slope of this line, we can turns out to be minus a half. We can calculate the slope of this line, which is 2, the negative reciprocal. And then, since I know it goes through this point here, the point 1, 4, which I identified as y3 and um, x3 and y3 right here, I get the value of b, which is 2. So I have the slope 2 and the intercept coincidentally both happen to be 2. Finally, the problem, oh, it's not the last problem, I'm sorry. Um, problem 31, number 14, it is the last problem for this. Here's the uh, question for this uh, part. The value in dollars of a new boat depreciates linearly as follows. Y equals minus 7,777 X plus 75,000 X years from purchase. That means for every, you start with a value of 75,000 when X is zero and then the boat goes down by a value of 7,777. This is called like a linear depreciation. And I think I've said in previous videos, most, uh, uh, most items like a boat don't depreciate linearly because they depreciate a lot more in the first year than they do in uh, subsequent years. But anyway, this assumes a linear depreciation. So what was the purchase value of the boat? And that would be where x is 0. So you just need to set x equal to 0, and you know the value is 75,000. What was the value of the boat five years after purchase? So you just need to put 5 in here, minus 7,777, multiply it by 5 and take that number, which is negative, and add it to 75,000. And it, you will get the point uh, value 36,100. After five years, it's going to have a value of 36,100. And the third question is, how many years would um, it depreciate? How many years would it depreciate the value to zero? So, in other words, here you're assuming this is zero because this is the value in dollars. Y is the value and X is the years. So, if this was zero, you make zero equal to this and you calculate X. And that would be 96438 years. So, how do we do that? First of all, we put in the equation, which is right here and it's shown right here. So it depreciates, which means it starts off at time zero. Don't worry about this part of the graph because it's really not relevant. The graph, in a sense, really starts at this point. Then as time goes along, the value of the boat goes down, down, down. Eventually, its value is zero. This is the value. 
and this is the time in years. This is the Y value, this is the X value. So what we did is we set up a line X equal 5 right here, and we see where it intersects with this point right here to see the value. And after five years, in box two we enter five and we click on the intersection of 75,000 minus 777, we obtain the um, value 53610. So this would be this point right here. Now you may be able to move your pointer along the line and click on it and show it. But uh, in any way, it's $36,100. You can get the same value just by taking the 75000 in the equation minus this by 5, and that will give you the 36100 Finally, you look for the point at which the value of the boat is 0. And that means that 0, it's right over here. You can click on this point. Y is 0 and X is 9644, which means that it takes 9644 years for the boat to uh, depreciate to 0 if the value is going down by $7,777 uh, a year. So you can set that to 0, solve for X, and you will get the 9644. So what I've tried to do is show you how looking at a graph and actually doing the numerical calculation can come together. And Desmos is a very uh, useful tool for doing that.